Hello, everybody, and welcome to TH238 Theology of Urban Ministry. I am Jim Gifford, and my colleague, Jim Logan, is yes. here, too. We're the two gems. Yes, we're a pair of gems, not a pair of jacks, a pair of gems. Yes. Um, we are here to team teach this course, and we are going to begin with this introductory video of just kind of dialoguing a little bit about urban ministry, theology, how they intersect, and uh, I'll start off just by asking my, my other Jim here uh, our first question. What, is, what do we mean when we talk about urban anyway? What is, what is, it, what is urban? Uh, that's a pretty good question. And I think a lot of times people are confused when they hear the word urban. Uh, they tend to think uh, or at least equate urban with a particular ethnicity, uh, a particular economic group. Uh, and so a lot of times, for a lot of people, regardless of who they are, uh, they tend to, to think of urban as referring to uh, poor African Americans. But that's not what you mean. No, not at all. I, we, we really, in terms of nomenclature, need to consider that there are primarily three descriptives that we use of different types of environments in which people primarily live. There's there's rural, which is countryside outside the city limits. There's suburban, uh, which historically has sort of been that in-between space between urban and rural, uh, what we would call uh, bedroom communities, uh, the suburbs, things of that nature. And then there's urban. Uh, but the urban, by and large, is just the city. Okay. It's the city. And because it's the city, you cannot reduce it to just a particular ethnic group or a particular economic, educational class or whatever, because everybody and everything is in the city. So urban is a cross-section of life. Absolutely. It, and and it, uh, cities are growing exponentially. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, one uh, statistic has stated that by 2025, more than 80% of the world's population will be coalesced in cities. So it behooves us to be able to deal with the urban ministry question. Absolutely. So that's what we mean by, by urban. It is essentially the city. The city. Okay. Um, so now, given your experience, how do you minister in that setting? Well, I, I, th I think we need to talk about, from that perspective, what exactly is urban ministry. Okay. And uh, just because this this is a, a, a class and you're going to be reading uh, some of the stuff, one of the books that, that you'll be reading is Ronald Peters' uh, book, uh, his volumes entitled Urban Ministry, uh, An Introduction. Uh, I just want to read a quote that, that he makes. Uh, he, he, says, he says, what is needed is a frank acknowledgement that Christian ministry the proclamation and living out of the gospel by the inspiration and empowerment of the Holy Spirit when it occurs in the city is urban ministry. It is not psychology, social work, criminal justice, or community organizing with a veneer of the cross pasted on it. And that's on page 21 in his particular book. So it would seem from what, what Peters wants to say in his book, is that there's really not a whole lot different between ministry that's performed in the city or in the country or in suburban areas that essentially uh, there, there really is not much difference. But one of our colleagues who teaches at uh, another institution, not our institution, at Gordon-Conwell uh, in its urban campus uh, in Boston, mm -hmm. uh, he writes, urban or inner city ministry is forced to deal not just with spiritual and personal issues, but systemic issues such as housing, banking, health and child care, and much more. Urban ministry deals with conditions brought about by poverty, class, prejudice, racism, and immigration, and languages, uh, language differences. So urban ministry, and this is my definition, this is the definition according to Logan, uh, sort of taken from uh, both these guys with a little bit of mind wrapped in there, and even a little bit of John 29, 7, seek the welfare of the city. You may be familiar with that verse. And this is what I, I wrote. Uh, the proclamation and the living out of the gospel by the inspiration and empowerment of the Holy, Holy Spirit in the city 
with special attention and emphasis given to creating and sustaining community in an environment that is transitory and devoid of existing communal and familiar structures. It is the unique role of the body of Christ to facilitate the formulation of communities empowered to deal with spiritual and personal issues as well as systemic issues such as housing, banking, health, child care, and more. Such empowered communities are then able to address the ever-challenging issues of prejudice, race, class, immigration, poverty, and language. Wow, that is a mouthful. It really is. It's probably not a great definition in terms of putting in a couple words, uh, but the issue really is that complex. Mm -hmm. And it is that simple. Right. Uh, if urban ministry is ministry within the urban context, but quite often the issues are very different and are unique to the city. I think that's a great definition. I, th I think it really touches on a couple of the most important things mm -hmm. uh, that, that we deal with in, in, in the city, which is, which is the idea of community and, and transitory, uh, which, which is something that, that interests me uh, as a theologian. Uh, one of the most underdeveloped areas of Christian theology is anthropology. Mm -hmm. and, and not only anthropology, but, but, but structural anthropology, the study of, 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 human, of, of human constructions, uh, mm -hmm. of cities and of, and of families, and, and, and of things that are not just individual, but are communal in nature. Well, well you're a theologian. Right. So why urban theology, or maybe more basic than that, um, what's the difference between a theology that we would label urban and other theologies? Well, that's a complicated question, or at least it's a simple question that, that, that brings out a complicated answer. One of the things that I think is important in, in looking at how the academy and the church has dealt with theology over the past two or three, four hundred years, is it's been a very individual effort. Mm -hmm. It's about me and Jesus, or about my personal walk, or my relationship, and, and not enough adequate theological thinking has gone into the communal aspect. Mm -hmm. It's a very vertical idea rather than a horizontal idea. And I think in times past, when when our culture was as much rural as urban, um, that worked out okay, because the existing social structures filled in the horizontal part, while we could concentrate on our relationship with Christ as the vertical part. But once we move into cities where people become much more transitory, those existing, as you read in your definition, those existing personal social structures don't exist anymore or, or are not as clear as they may have once been. Mm -hmm. So now the, the theology in, in the urban world has to deal in both a horizontal and a vertical aspect, mm -hmm. whereas in the more social or in the more rural, pastoral, and even suburban world, it's probably more vertical than horizontal. Mm -hmm. and, and the idea of Christian community uh, becomes absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. for a living out of a, of a viable urban theology. No, I, you know, strange things jump in my head all the time. One of the things that jumped in my head was that, and I'm dating myself a little bit, uh, that old song, No Man is an Island. Mm. Uh, you are dating yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's but, older than me, a lot. <laughs> but, but, but the sense that, that when you live in a city, Although that is an issue, because one of the issues in the city is is loneliness, mm -hmm. which seems to be an interesting issue when you're surrounded by so many people. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess theologically, putting uh, dealing with that issue uh, as the way you put it, the way you combat that is understanding that there, there's there's got to be a horizontal relationship and not just the, did I get it right vertical and right, horizontal, right. And, and not just the vertical relationship yeah yeah and, and an adequate theology you know we, we think of theology as a study of God and that's really true but it's not just a study of God it's a study of, about God and all that he's done mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And it's about creation. It's about the 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 the, the people that he has created, and the, and how we interact with mm -hmm. with the other people, and how we how we form relationships and bonds, and and the structures that we create on that, like cities and organizations yeah. and all of that. You can't do just God and nobody else. Mm -hmm. To to it even goes back to the great commandment: "You shall love the Lord your God." But the second one is just like it: "You shall love your neighbor as yourself." I, and, and you can't have one without the other. Right, and I, I mean that poses some really great challenges in the city when you deal with the reality that everybody and everything is in the city. Yes. So that means that which makes me comfortable and that which makes me uncomfortable. Yes. It's it's all right there. The good, the bad, and the ugly, every bit of it. All in your face. Yep. And pretty much all the time. Right. Right. I mean, e even if you think about uh, new life, and and for those of you who may not have actually been to the, to the residential campus, you this might not make sense to you, but... We are in a section of of the city called uh, Noda, which stands for North Davidson, mm -hmm. and this is an area of the city that has has been and is still in the process of being gentrified, and in some instances regentrified. That's that's in essence where you you take an area that has uh, is older and become run down, and uh, you can buy it up at uh, fairly. This is a real simplistic. Uh, description very low prices and then rehab it. Uh, so a lot of new homes have been built where houses have been torn down, or a lot of old houses have been rehabbed and uh, renovated. And of course, that causes the the property values to skyrocket. Mm -hmm. And then you get a different demographic in the neighborhood. And so here in in North Davidson. Uh, this neighborhood is probably very eclectic. Very much so. Uh, you you you're liable to to find um, uh, people walking down the street with with spiked hair, uh, right alongside of uh, young mothers pushing the the very expensive three wheeled of uh, uh, baby, baby baby strollers strollers that they use for jogging behind, and all ethnicities and races. Mm -hmm here in the area, interesting restaurants, tattoo parlors, art galleries for for um, gallery crawls. I mean, all that's right here in this community. So this community is really kind of a, a laboratory. And it us. is very, very urban. Yes. And it does not meet the traditional stereotypes of urban at all. No. In fact, I don't know if you've met him. Uh, Sometimes when when we've gone to to lunch at uh, some of the restaurants like uh, the 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 Cajun restaurant, there is uh, an elderly uh, man on the, uh, a walker uh, who is a fixture in mm -hmm. Noda. So much so that he has been labeled. Everybody calls him the mayor of Noda. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've not met him yet. And uh, you know, an interesting interesting guy. Uh, the interesting thing for me is. I don't think he's homeless, um, but he he does not have a whole lot to support himself, mm -hmm. and so he may ask you for a dollar or so. I've never seen anybody mistreat him, and the fact that they call him the mayor of Noda, which is obviously an honorary title, mm -hmm. uh, says something about how people who have interacted with him, and and probably the majority of these people are not necessarily your stereotypical Christian, right. per se, but they're practicing a little bit of what urban theology tries to deal with. Right. And and one of the things that I think that, that urban theology has become is it's become part of the what, what, what demographers and all call the post-Christian landscape, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, that, that the United States was once very culturally Christian. Mm -hmm. And those days are changing and probably forever. And and the the urban the work of urban ministry is a very post Christian endeavor. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's an endeavor that that now um, where we we who are believers and who are ministering in this context are not necessarily operating from the numerical majority mm -hmm. that we once enjoyed. Can can you perhaps uh, give <clears throat> give our students a little bit of a preview, in by way of what you think 
might be some dominant theological themes that we will talk about. Yeah, um, one of the major branches that we're going to deal with is anthropology. Mm -hmm. um, we're we're going to look at the city from a theological, anthropological perspective. Mm -hmm. um, we're we're going to look at how the city has been portrayed throughout the pages of Scripture. Uh, it's been good, it's been bad, it's been indifferent mm -hmm. through, a, as we go along. We're going to look at the city in history. Uh, really take a look at Christianity as an urban idea. Mm -hmm. um, but both both Judaism and Christianity are urban religions mm -hmm. that they are centered about the city. Mm -hmm. And and as we even move through the beginnings of Christianity in the Book of Acts, it's a very city oriented idea. Mm -hmm. It's a very city oriented faith. The early church is very city oriented. Mm -hmm. The medieval faith is very city oriented. The the Reformation faith. It's very city oriented. Mm -hmm. um, so we will look at how the city interacts with the faith down through time. Uh, we'll also take a look at uh, the area that, that I will really dive into pretty deeply. It is the, um, the, anth the theological anthropology uh, mm -hmm. of, of the city. Take a look at what makes urban urban mm -hmm. and, and really build off of the definition that you gave uh, with the idea of transitory and the idea of a lack of community. Mm -hmm. uh, be, being being the touchstones of, of, of an urban anthropology, mm -hmm. at least a theological anthropology, and, and, and look at ways that we can explore how to utilize that, uh, at least begin to utilize that in a ministry setting. Mm -hmm. and, and then now I know that you have 30 plus years of experience mm -hmm. of ministry in the urban setting. Mm -hmm. We'll transition the course from the, the, the theoretical, theological mm -hmm. to the practical. And then you can now pick up where I leave off and show how you'll move on. Yeah, I, and I think that that's that's very good too because uh, you know you're thinking about the city where you have so many people concentrated in uh, a relatively small space as compared to 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 rural America where people sat on multiple acres. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, even when you get into our residential neighborhoods. Uh, people would be doing good to have a quarter of an acre. Right. So the houses tend to be very close together. So you get a high concentration of people together. And then when you get into the the more corporate areas of the city where you have the taller buildings interspersed with uh, condominiums or, or apartments and things of that nature. And, and Charlotte is a little bit different from northern cities in the sense that we don't have any quote unquote tenement buildings like mm -hmm. some northern cities do. But we are getting more and more upscale apartments and townhomes very expensive a couple of them a couple blocks away from here yeah that's right and more being built and 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 when when you think about about those things you might very well have a a a church on a corner and maybe on another corner or in the same block you might have a club mm -hmm. or a bar. Uh, and when you get into more suburban and rural areas, uh, there may be there may be governmental regulations about how close can a bar or a club be to a church. And you don't necessarily have that same thing in the city because everything's so close mm -hmm. in together. That presents some interesting challenges. The first thing that comes to my mind is how difficult it becomes to carve out sacred space. Mm -hmm. uh, and what does that even mean? For yeah, that was my question. What does that mean yeah. in, in, in the urban environment? Right. I, I think we go back to the whole piece of how somebody with all these people all around could be lonely mm -hmm. uh, in, in the city. Certainly the dealing with hopelessness and, and despair Mm -hmm. uh, that that people have in the city, and Charlotte's one of these cities that has endeavored to sanitize homeless homelessness uh, without success. I might add. I don't think it can be sanitized. Uh, and, and and you know what what happens with with all those issues. Uh, so this this is this is not um, an insignificant course. No. Uh, th this this is a very significant course we we want it to be foundational we want it to be formative uh, 
we we want it to be very practical. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do want to wed the theoretical and the practical together uh, because these issues are not becoming simpler. No. They're becoming more and more complex. More and more complex. Uh, and I think that we can count on that happening. The, the one thing that I think concerns me, and, and I'm not sure when we'll talk about that pr precisely, uh, but I think somewhere along the line, we, we have to address homogeneity. Mm -hmm. And Don't tell us what you mean by that. Uh, well, homogeneity is basically sameness. It's, it's, it's the attempt to create uh, not just similarities, but sameness. Uh, uh, sameness how? Well, let, let, me, let me use the church, for instance. I, I was part of a denomination, and there was, there was a move in that denomination to create homogeneity in the denomination, so much so that if you were in a Presbyterian church in Charleston, West Virginia, and you came to Charlotte, North Carolina on a Sunday morning and walked into a Presbyterian church, you would feel perfectly at home. Yes, this is a Presbyterian church because they're singing the same type of songs. They have the same liturgy. Uh, kind of like every McDonald's is like every other McDonald's. Right. It's a franchise mentality, but but you, you can count on everything being the same. And that's false. Right. That, 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 that homogeneity, or even a quest for homogeneity in that, in that regard, sort of denies what God has done in creation. Mm -hmm. That he has created us very different people. Uh, we are alike in very many important ways, but when it comes to the individual person, we're very different. Okay. Groups of people are different. Uh, that poses a challenge. Uh, how do we deal with cultural differences? Uh, case in point, uh, when I went to Brazil seven, several years ago, uh, they told us not to give the thumbs up to anybody in Brazil. Thumbs up here means, that's hey, good, okay, that's great. In Brazil, that you might as well have been sticking up your middle finger. <laughs> you know, it was a difference. Wouldn't want to do that. No, we wouldn't want to do that. It's a, it's a difference in culture, uh, and that poses some challenges as well. Okay. So you can see we're going to have some fun. We are this semester, and uh, we hope that you will uh, set yourself to engage us, uh, engage us with your uh, discussion posts, uh, with your assignments. Uh, you, you you have some very specific things uh, that we hope to do. We want you to take them seriously. Yeah, and 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 we've tried to design this course in a way that that you can take it and use it. Uh, it's not just going to be a bunch of writing that you can file away to nothing. We we're going to create some projects and some some real interactive things that hopefully you will be able to to utilize in your own ministry. Yeah, maybe we might even steal some of your ideas. Not plagiarize, of course, but you know. Yeah, we don't believe in that here. No, we don't do that. Yeah, yeah. That was a hint in case you missed it. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, listen, I I, I think we're done. Don't I think we done? are. Okay. Though so this is the end for today of the Jim and Jim Pony Show. So I hope you get something out of this, and we'll look to read what you write. Yep. Have, enjoy the class. Later. Right. Stop.